I couldn't wait to get my key fob and play with it. And I noticed that the plastic was a little wobbly. It kind of creaked when I would squeeze it a little bit. And so that made me wonder what would happen if I took it apart. So I took it apart for your viewing pleasure. And inside, you can see that it has an FCC number. And I looked up this FCC number. And uh, truth be told, they are certified and they passed FCC. And I uh, come down here, this is the part number. And I see that on the FCC filing, there is a picture of a CE mark for different markets. So it looks like they don't have their certification or their CE quite yet, but I think that they will be getting that pretty soon. And I looked into the IC, and we'll talk about that in just a few moments. In fact, I think this is the IC number right there. And uh, this, the way they put this on here, this is a laser, so they have a laser to change every single one of those. And uh, it's rather quick with the laser, it just takes a couple seconds. So this is the IC right here, that's the main IC. And when you look up this number here, you'll see that it's a Texas instrument and it is Bluetooth 5.2. So if you've never heard of Bluetooth 5.2, it's right inside there. And this is the antenna, and these red dots here, that's glue holding the antenna in place. And right here it says ANT, so that kind of gives you an indication that this trace going right here is going to the antenna. And when you look down here, you can see SMK. And SMK, I saw on the FCC filing, is the company in Mexico that manufactured, in Tijuana, Mexico, they manufactured these circuit boards. And there are one, two, three, four buttons, one, two, three, four, which trigger certain functions on your key fob. Now, taking a look down here, in every corner you can see that they put glue. Glue in all these corners. I'm not sure if you're able to, to see those or not, but right down there, they glued the circuit board in place. And typically, I would like to see snap hooks uh, or some sort of ultrasonic welding or heat staking where the plastic comes through the circuit board and they heat stake it. Here it looks like they took and they put a little glue to hold it in place. So I found that to be kind of unique and interesting. And this is a fiducial on the circuit board. This is how they do mass production with circuit board assembly. And you can see right down here, these are called mouse bites. And when they have multiple circuit boards on one panel, uh, they will break them apart and it makes it much faster and easier for manufacturing. So I wanted to share with you the teardown and some of the details I saw from the circuit board here. Another thing they did on this, on this side is they have test points. So they can program and they can test the circuit board before they ship it out to you. So that's really nice. And this QR code, this is used by the manufacturer. That's how they keep track and they're able to ensure that each circuit board was uh, assembled, uniform, and it was tested, and it made it through its entire process. The plastic here, it looks like it was a single shot plastic. So I'm not sure right now, it looks like it's a straight pole. So there wasn't any undercuts and that makes it a lot cheaper. Yeah, so it looks like they have a straight pole injection mold. Oh, right here they have some clips. So those clips will then require undercuts. And, well, it makes an undercut, and then it re will require sliders uh, to be able to go in and uh, block off the plastic there. So I'm not sure why they chose this type of design. I would have designed it a little bit differently, but that's what it looks like, and that's what they went with. And it looks like for waterproofing or dust control, they have this. And in mine, it was a little smashed, so I was a little concerned with, with this when I saw it. And I don't see any marking for the plastic. They don't identify whether this is ABS or PP, polypropylene. I'm assuming this is probably ABS. It's pretty, pretty rigid plastic. ABS and polycarbonate are pretty common, pretty common plastics to use for this type of an assembly. So let's go ahead and see what it looks like if we were to put it together. When I was taking this apart, I was trying to figure out how on earth did they put this together? So I'm assuming they probably had this undone. 
So that pretty much just slides itself in place. And they're using one screw to fasten this. And then they're using the plastic on top with the two screws here to hold it all together. They're using an O-ring. Let's see. And these are thread forming screws. So when you look when you look closely at the thread, these actually are designed to go into the mounting bosses in the plastic here. So that, that screw is going to create its own thread. So you can only insert these screws so many times before the plastic actually strips out. So it's really important that you don't open and close these plastics more than necessary. And that probably goes here. And the undercuts, there's probably snaps right here that interact with these snaps which will help to hold it in place a little bit more. And you know these buttons, buttons here. Uh, it looks like this was a two-shot mold, so it's basically one piece. But when you push the button here, you can see this button right here will be triggered. And that's the next button. So they basically had to make two injection molds in order to bring this part to life and squirt plastic on top of each other. I'm assuming they also used ABS and a type of... Uh, a TPU material, TPE. And I'm going to go ahead and put these screws in, put this back together. These screws are small. Usually if I was to do something like this, I'd take tweezers. And it's a little bit more difficult with, it's a little bit more difficult with small screws and fat fingers. And the material they used here, it's, it's probably a, a type of a zinc alloy and it's plated. I've ordered those in the past, a little bit smaller. They're actually carabiners I had ordered for a trade show, and I think they cost me four cents a piece in China about five years ago. Now it's going to be a lot more expensive, but still I would not try to use this for any substantial weight, meaning I wouldn't try to climb with this. And we'll put the CR2450 battery in there. I was really sad to see how easy this comes out. If you drop your key fob from any distance, this, this will pop out pretty easily. And they're using snap, snap hooks right here. One, two, three, four. And these simply get pushed in and you push them down and they clip. They clip in place. The hard thing is if it's not lined properly, they're not gonna hook properly. So it makes it a little bit challenging. And that's how you assemble a Rivian R1T key fob.